went to see a specialist about it. He said, you've got this disease. Um, there's no reason why you should other than intense chronic stress. What are you stressed about? I told him, I said, you know, my th things have fallen apart. The thing I thought I knew about life, I, I thought I'd come home and try to bring my kids home to their grandparents and their family, and it all fell apart. I read all the time, but what I read is nonfiction. I've never really had a taste for fiction and certainly not for poetry. But a few years ago, around 2013, I found myself in a, one, the worst crisis of my life. I had uh, moved down to my hometown in South Louisiana, a small village on the Mississippi River. Uh, my sister had died, my younger sister, and uh, my wife and I felt called to move down there to try to help out with my parents and my sister's children. And uh, we left Philadelphia, moved down there, and then some dark family secrets came out. And uh, I, to make a long story short, I was lost, I completely lost. Uh, the things I thought were true weren't true. And I uprooted myself and my family to come down there to find that my father and my, my sister's kids just did not want to accept me. And uh, that was, it started a real crisis because our family had been pretty close. Uh, I got physically quite ill, was diagnosed with chronic mononucleosis and uh, went to see a specialist about it. He said, you've got this disease. Uh, there's no reason why you should other than intense chronic stress. What are you stressed about? I told him, I said, you know, my th things have fallen apart. The thing I thought I knew about life, I, I thought I'd come home and try to bring my kids home to their grandparents and their family and it all fell apart. He said, well, you're gonna have to leave Louisiana or you're, you might not make it. I said, I can't leave Louisiana. I'm my parent, I'm the only child left. He said, well, you better find inner peace some way. I said, great, what am I gonna do? We had started a little Rocor parish, a mission parish in our town. And, um, you know, my priest father, Matthew uh, Harrington was helping me with that, but nothing quite seemed to work. One day I found myself in a bookstore in Baton Rouge, the big city, not far from where, from my town. And I was in the poetry section, which is weird because I normally wouldn't be there. And there on the top shelf was the Divine Comedy of Dante Alighieri. And I remember thinking, you know, I wish I had read that. I never had it in high school, never had it in college. And, um, but I figured I was, it was, my time was past, that I, it was too complicated to understand. That, and that was the end of that. But I pulled it off the shelf anyway. I don't know why. I opened to the first page, the first lines of the Inferno, which is the first book. In the middle of the journey of our life, I came to myself in a dark wood, for I had lost the straight path. It hit me like a lightning bolt. This is me? I was 45, 46 years old then, in the middle of my life. I thought I had, was going the straight path back home. And in fact, I was in a dark wood. I put the book back on the shelf and said, this is, I, I'm not gonna buy another big book that I won't read, but I couldn't get it off my mind. I was haunted by it. And finally, I bought the book and I began reading it prayerfully. I mean, with deep prayer. And I began to study everything I could about the Divine Comedy, because what it is, it's a story of a man, Dante Alighieri, the actual poet, who in the middle of his life, when he was on top of the world, he was a well-known poet, he was one of the um, political leaders of the city of Florence, but then he got on the wrong side of the Pope and was sent into exile, was told, if you ever come back home, we'll kill you. So he lost his fame, he lost his fortune, he lost his family, he lost everything that, meant, that told him who he was. He spent the rest of his life wandering, trying to figure out what happened to him and why it happened. Out of this exile, the poet wrote The Divine Comedy, which is um, a fictional account of a, of a man named Dante who went through the afterlife on, an, uh, on Holy Week, on Easter weekend. He went to hell, he went to purgatory, Catholic, and he went to paradise. And it's all an allegory for the journey of repentance. So as I am reading The Inferno, which is his trip through hell, this is where the, the man Dante begins to learn about his sinfulness. I'm reading this, this incredible story about the, the, the encounters he has in hell, and I'm saying to myself, the, the part early on where he meets a man uh, named uh, Farinata, who had really existed in Florence, was a very proud man of the city, proud of his family. 
Um, Dante uh, meets him and they start arguing about politics back home in Florence. And I'm reading that thinking, Dante, you're never gonna win this guy over. Walk on, he's, he's not free to walk on because he is in hell, but you can walk on. I realized that's me and my dad. That's me arguing with my dad. My dad's never gonna change his mind. But I have the freedom to walk on. My priest had been telling me this. I was seeing a therapist at the time. He had been telling me this, but I couldn't get it through my head. Reading it in this beautiful poem, it somehow made sense to me. This kept happening to me as I read through the poem. I would read about these characters and I would see principles that my, my priest and my therapist had told me in a direct non-fictional way that, and I would fight it, but the poetry itself that went right below my defenses and convicted my heart. I would go to confession to Father Matthew and I would tell him things like, I was reading the Divine Comedy this week and there's Dante goes to the Wood of the Suicides and, and there he meets a man who had been the, the servant or the secretary to the Holy Roman Emperor. Um, the Holy Roman Emperor had thrown him in prison thinking that he had been a thief. The man committed suicide because he couldn't live without the approval of this father figure. And it made me realize, I told the priest, that I've lived that way about my father. And I told my priest, I've been an idol worshiper. I made an idol of family, I made an idol of place, and I made an idol of my dad. And I wanna repent of this. I said that in confession. And do you know, when these things kept happening, grace began to open up the Jesus prayer. I was saying that, learning how to say it in a very intense way during this entire process. Grace, the, the, the Holy Spirit found a foothold in my heart and led me to a sense of harmony and peace. And I, I ended up writing a book about it called How Dante Can Save Your Life. I read through the entire comedian and um, I got to a better place with my dad. And because of what the Lord did for me through reading Dante, through coming to me in this poem written by a Catholic in the Middle Ages, it's an incredibly orthodox poem, um, which your readers will, your, your viewers will see if they read it. Um, I was there, there with my dad in his last two weeks, I lived in the bedroom with him. He was on home hospice care in 2015. I moved into the bedroom with him. My mom was just exhausted and couldn't take care of him anymore. And I slept in the bedroom. He was in his hospital bed. I was in his old bed. I prayed the Psalms over him. I read him stories. I rubbed lotion to his feet. And when he breathed his last, he was surrounded by everyone in the family. I was holding one of his hands. My mom was holding the other. And, uh, I had always, I told my wife when we married, I said, the day my dad dies will be the day that my whole world cracks. Um, you're gonna have to hold me together. Well, there we were, we got to the day. And I was, not only did he die, but he died with me holding his hand. And I felt nothing but peace. After the mourners left that day, and we, the, the undertaker came to get my dad's body, I went back to my own house late that night for the first time in about 10 days. Everybody was asleep, and I thought, how did this happen? How, how is it that I have such a sense of harmony and peace? And then I realized it was because of what God gave me through Dante. There's a, a nun that Dante, the character Dante, meets in heaven. And, um, and Dante, the character, can't figure out why, why God let a certain thing happen to this nun. And the nun tells him, you've got it all wrong. It doesn't matter to me why this happened. What matters is that I'm here with the Lord forever. In his will, she says, in his will is our peace. And I realized that's why I decided to do in this process of repentance with my dad. Father Matthew kept telling me, you have to love him. He may never understand you, but you have to love him. And because I agreed to obey and get over myself, obey to, to, to serve the will of God, that was why I had this moment of incredible grace and peace at the end of my father's life. That was when I cried. The only time I cried about my father's death, but it, there were tears of joy and thanksgiving for what the Lord had given to me through Dante.